What's going on YouTube? Kamikaze Von Doom here with another Division 2 video. Now shout out to the DoD Disciples of Doom. And today's Division 2 video, this is going to be the change your settings now in the Division 2 where I'm going to do like a deep dive into my settings that I use personally and explain to you exactly why you should change them um, to whatever it is um, based off of my own opinion. So this entire video is just going to be, you know, biased to me and my play style and how I like to have my settings. So you can disagree with some of these settings. You can tweak them in whatever certain way to match your play style and however you know your liking is so with all that said and done let's do a deep dive into my settings so sit back relax enjoy the video don't forget to hit that thumbs up subscribe if you're new and let me know in the comment section below what you guys think i did get this requested quite a bit so i figured i would uh do a video on it so for this you hit start and then you go to settings. Now you have quite a number of options. So let's start off at the top with gameplay. Now, a lot of people change from metric to imperial. I keep it metric. Uh, a majority of the, the, the world uses metric. Um, it's basically just a thing, you know, some Americans will change just based off of their liking. But for me, I'm used to it with the last game, so I just kept it on metric for this game as well. The next setting, on-call status. So on-call status, you can see when people are calling for backup when they need help. And um, you can choose to have this on at all times where you receive calls from nearby agents, friends, and clan members. But for right now, I have mine turned on none because I'm doing a video, I'm trying to show you guys these settings, so I don't really want someone to call for help for right this second, you know what I mean. Now we have the next, uh, let's see, the next setting I want to show you under gameplay. boop a doop -a -doop, right here, show skills on group frame. So you know how whenever you're running with your teammates, it'll show their name in the bottom right corner? Well, I have it to where it'll show my teammates' name and the skills that they are using. Now, this is the option you have to click yes so that it shows the skills under that little UI part where it says their name. It will also tell you whatever skills they have on their build at that time. So for things like the raid or doing legendaries or what have you, it's pretty cool to be able to see whatever skills your friends are using, what skills are on cooldown. That way you guys can talk to each other, figure out the best uh, team synergy, and go from there. Now, let's see. I don't think there's any other one. Okay, so those are going to be the last ones I want to show you. So for gameplay, the last two settings I want to show you are additional field of vision. Now, this is normal and while aiming. Now, mine are at 10. I believe your character starts off at zero, and it'll max out to 25. Now, I only have mine at 10 because I'm, I'm working my way up. It's a little different playing with that additional field of vision. And let me explain to you exactly what that is. So while you are walking, you can see that your character... Your camera is directly behind your character, and then the rest is, you know, your surrounding environment. Well, if you increase the additional field of vision, your character will seem smaller, and the amount of degrees of environment that you can see around you increases. So that is why my character is a little bit smaller, and you can see more around him in this area. Now to increase that, again, you just go to settings, go to gameplay, and then scroll down to additional, do, 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 additional field of vision. So that was at 10, and let's see, here's 25. And you can see it's almost like a, a crazy zoom in. We can see all the way down, all the way down there. And this would kind of give me a headache 
I'm not really used to this sort of additional field of vision. So that's why I have mine down to 10 instead of 25. But again, this is all personal preference. So you can use it. Uh, you can choose not to use it and put it all the way back down to zero. Uh, but that's up to you. So that's all the settings I want to show you under gameplay. Let's go under UI. So UI, there are two, well, there's three things I want to show you. So the first one is the RAID Speed Run UI. You have to enable this one on yes. So you want to make sure this says yes, and every time you are doing the RAID, whether it be Dark Hours or Iron Horse, you can see your time for each of the sections of the raid. That way, if you are, you know, hurting on boss three, you can see, well, it took us, you know, four minutes to get here, and then it takes us 45 minutes to beat this one area. We need to fix that one area. It really helps with like raid teams and speed runs and things like that. That way you can help pinpoint where the problem is with that team synergy and, you know, make it happen. Now the next one is floating combat text. Now this is a this is a personal preference. Now a lot of people think it looks cool and I personally enjoy it, but I'm gonna go down to the uh, targeting range and show you exactly what the floating combat text looks like. So normally whenever you shoot enemies, you will see the hit marker over their head and it will have a number pop up. Now what I did is I chose to have all of my damages uh, go down a scrolling text. For example, if I were to shoot this guy, you can see how the numbers are to the right of my screen. See, all of the numbers are to the right of my screen. And it just shows me all of those numbers right there in my face. Now, if I were to change that under UI, go to scrolling text, I believe random sphere, yeah, is what uh, it usually is. So then you can see those are the numbers that you're, you normally see, where they pop up on the character that you're shooting, and you can see some of the numbers, others you can't see. They're kind of small and hidden. So what I chose to do is go to settings, <clears throat> UI, scroll combat text and made it on floating. So make sure that setting is on floating. And then now all of your numbers are enlarged, clear, and to the right. That way you can see all of your numbers as it's happening in real time. And let's see, what is the last setting under UI I wanna show you? I believe it is customize, there we go. So here is customize your UI. Now what you can do is you can choose to scroll through your D-pad and you can change the size of each of these uh, UI displays. You can move them around, you can make them big, you can make them small, and you can you know put them outside of the screen. It doesn't really matter. So what I chose to do, and you do not have to do this, again, this is just me, so what I chose to do is I made my map a little bit bigger in the top left corner. I made my XP bar a little bit smaller and I tried to put it way up there in the top corner as close as I can go. I have my friends a little bit enlarged and in the bottom right corner. And then for the conflict timer and scoreboard, I actually made this pretty small and keep it, you know, top center and this is just how I typically have my UI nothing crazy I try to keep things out of the way that way I can just focus on what's in front of me and those are all of your UI settings so now that we've done gameplay and UI let's go to audio so for audio I just chose to turn down the music a little bit it was starting to blare out my own you know headset you really don't have to do that Going down to controls, this is where things get a little crazy. Now my camera sensitivity is at 20, which is max, and my aim sensitivity is at 18, which is near max. So let me um, show you what this changes. So going over here, let's just do, I don't know, we'll do 
Invulnerable, probably five, ten meters. Nothing crazy. Okay. So, go to settings, go down to controls. Now, camera sensitivity. So, right now we are at 20. Let's, let's put it down to, I don't know. I think it'll start off in the game as five. Okay. So, this is me turning as fast as I can. Okay. And this is with zero sensitivity on the camera. All right. Pretty normal, huh? Okay. So now let's crank that sucker up to 20. And now here's the camera. It's a lot quicker. And you can see the responsiveness is pretty dead set. It's really quick. And that's why I have that camera setting now on 20 because I can move around really quick and see what's going on. So that's the camera sensitivity. Now aim sensitivity. Let's put that down to five. All right. So there's that. All right. So let's look around so you can see this is me going as fast as I can left to right. Okay. That's me going as fast as I can. Now let's crank it back to where, where was I? I'm at 18. I don't want to go too crazy because then you can get a potato aim. So 18, and now you can see it's a lot quicker. And this is while aiming. So I can sit there. If they're strafing, I can move it real quick with them. And if you know they're moving, I can move it pretty quick with them as well. I don't have it all the way cranked up just because I felt it's a little too quick for me. So that's why I have the camera sensitivity at 20 so I can see everything really quick. And then the aim sensitivity at 18 because I, I felt it was just a little too quick for me at 20. Now the next one I want to show you is controller vibration. I actually have this turned off. I have this turned off. Um, this is another personal preference. I don't like it uh, every time it makes the controller go off. Uh, it'll hurt your hands after a while. If you're using a battery controller, it'll kill your batteries faster. And I just felt it's a little distracting. So I have that turned off and I love it. Now the next two are the dead zone sizes. So I believe they start this one out at 10. So here is 10. Let's see if it'll work. Okay, so it's somewhat quick. Now what this is, is it's the responsiveness of my analog sticks. So this is at 10. And now I'll drop it down to zero. Well, actually, let's see what it's at, 20. Okay, so 20. I mean, it's still, it's not as good. I mean, it's okay. And then let's go back to zero where I had it. And again, this is all based off of personal preference. So you can choose to change these settings or keep it how you want it. It's up to you. Now this one, it, it's just a little bit quicker. So my character moves a lot faster. It is smoother at zero. That way, if uh, my controller, my thumbs, I mean, this is all based off of my thumbs and the way I use my controller. Um, but I keep that at zero. All right, go back to settings. So that was everything under controls. Next is graphics. Now I play on a Series S um, on a 4K screen. Now the Series S doesn't do full 4K, but it does good enough. Now, what I prefer for my videos is I prefer the brightness to be up a little bit, so I have it at 16. Now, the sharpness I put up as well because I think it looks good on my monitor and my videos to have the sharpness up a little bit. And then the contrast, I went up just a hair uh, just because. 
Now, the neutral lighting, this is completely up to you just based off of what you like, you know, the scenery to look like. I have the neutral lighting on, um, but you can choose to have it off. That's completely up to you. And that is it for graphics. Next is VoIP. This is up to you. This is uh, when you can disable it. You don't have to talk to anybody or you can have it off where you can talk to people. The only thing I would say is uh, check these two settings right here. So this one is the input threshold where you could really blow someone's speakers out if you're just running around in game chat and you have this all the way up. So I have mine at 20 just so people can hear me and it's not overbearing. Now for the volume boost, I only have that at 30. Again, I'm not trying to have their voice you know, bust my speakers, and I'm not trying to have my voice bust their speakers. So I have both of these settings pretty low. That way you can hear everyone nice and clear. Um, let's see, the last one um, is accessibility. Now, I don't change anything under language. Now, obviously, if you're in a different country and you prefer a certain language, go for it. But for me, language, I just kept it all English and we're good to go. Now, under accessibility, this is the last section, and then we are done. So accessibility, I actually have a large chat text on. Um, it's just, it's faster for me, and I, I don't know, I like it better. Now, as far as the high contrast, that's up to you. Sometimes I have it on, sometimes I have it off. It just depends on how I'm feeling. The next one is on-screen keyboard. So you can actually use your keyboard on screen. So I have this on yes. Now to use this, you hit down on the D-pad. Um, you have to be in a group though. So you hit down on the D-pad and then you can type and it'll send it to everyone that is in that group. Now if I go back to the settings, it'll actually tell you right here. It says enables an on-screen keyboard type uh, tap down on the D-pad to send a text message to your group. And that's it. You're good to go. You can do text to speak chat if you want to sound like a robot. I know some people do that, and it's pretty funny. But besides that, that is it, everyone. That is all of the settings that I use and change on the Division 2. I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope you found this helpful or informative in any way. And if so, don't forget to hit that thumbs up, support the channel by subscribing, and let me know what you think in the comment section below. But these are all of the settings that you can change right now in the Division 2 to help your overall gameplay and experience. But alright everyone, I am Kamikaze Von Doom. Hope you enjoyed these tips and tricks, and I will see you all in the next one. Peace!